Hi guys, welcome back to this tutorial series on making an FPS weapon manager. We are getting pretty far along in this series now, which is really exciting. Our FPS manager is starting to look really good. If this is the first video you're seeing in this series, then I would highly recommend that you check out the other videos in this series where we go from a default 3D kinematic body to a full FPS weapon manager that you can use to create FPS games like Halo or Far Cry, all in the Godot game engine. If you've been enjoying this series so far, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at dropping our weapons. Let's jump right in. Okay, so in our current state, we've got a lot of things up and running and we're almost done, but we can pick up weapons. However, we can't drop them. And, you know, in some games, you might not want to drop them, but um, I'm going to show you guys how to do it if you need to. Um, I'm going to add it into this FPS weapon manager just for fun. And we're going to fix up a few things along the way. So the first thing we need to do is add an input. So I'll come up to the project settings and I'll click project settings and then I'll come across to the input map and I'll type in drop and I'll click add here. And I'm gonna make this the letter G. Pretty sure that's a common input. Um, and I'll come to the FPS weapon manager script and I'm gonna create a new function right below our pickup function. And I'll just call it drop. And it's gonna take a variable and it's just gonna be the name of the weapon that we're gonna drop. And that's gonna be a string. And then I'll just type pass in here. And I'll come right back up to our input function here and I'll type if event dot is action pressed drop and I'll just call that function drop and I'll pass in the current weapon dot name. Just make sure to check that variable that is the same as the resource variable weapon name. So I've got this wrong here. I'm going to type weapon underscore name. That's the variable I need to pass in. We haven't looked at the weapon resource in a while. so might forget that just double check it yours might be different in here the first variable we are going to need is a reference to that in our weapon stack so i'm going to type var weapon underscore ref equals weapon stack dot find name comma zero because we're going to start from the very start of the ray if that returns a negative one then this is already a problem and we're not going to process anything but generally it's going to return something greater than that so I'll type weapon stack dot pop at weapon ref, which would be the weapons position in the weapon stack. So what that will effectively do is just remove the weapon from the weapon stack so we can no longer access it. And we're going to emit the signal update weapon stack. You'll have to bear with me. I'm doing it the old fashioned way here in a lot of these videos. I haven't actually worked out. It was updated. I've got a video out on that that I put up a few weeks ago if you want to watch. So we'll go on to the next step here. I'll type var weapon dropped. Now we're actually going to need to spawn a rigid body at this point. Um, but how do we know which rigid body to spawn? We're going to need to add another variable to our weapon resource. So let's pull those up. I'll come over to one of these and you can see we don't have anything. We've got a projectile to load, which is the same thing. It is just a rigid body if you are loading a projectile. So we'll come over to the uh, weapon resource script, wherever you've saved that. And we'll just add another variable here. We'll type at export var. And I'm going to call mine weapon underscore drop. And it's going to be another pack scene. And fortunately, we've already created these in our series when we created them to be able to pick them up. So we can spawn the exact same ones. In fact, we need to, otherwise we won't be able to pick them up. And I'll just drag these into the corresponding weapons and that's it. I don't know why that has a box on it. Anyway, um, okay, so we can come back into here and we've already typed weapon list square brackets name. And so now we can just call that variable that we created dot weapon underscore drop and then we'll need to call instantiate so one thing that we need to remember to do is actually transfer the current ammo and the reserve ammo onto this dropped weapon they have default starting values but at this point we're going to want to override them so i'll type weapon dropped dot current ammo and weapon dropped dot reserve ammo and we'll just transfer that so weapon list square brackets name current ammo and Weapon list square brackets name reserve ammo. 
The other thing we need to do before we add it to the scene is actually set up its position. Otherwise it's just gonna spawn at the zero point of the world. So I'll type weapon drop dot set global transform. And I'm gonna set that to just be the bullet point, which is like at the end of the muzzle of any weapon. So it's just gonna be sort of in front of the player. And um, I'll just set bullet point dot get global transform. And that'll be all we need for that. And now we can add this rigid body to the scene. So I'll get access to the world. So I'll type var world and I'll go get, and I'll type get tree dot get root dot get child zero. And that'll just be, uh, in our case, the world node. And so now we type world dot add child and we can pass in weapon dropped. And so now our weapon will actually appear in the world. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can actually switch to that weapon. I think that's probably the best way to go about it. Once you pick up a weapon, you want to switch to it. Uh, so we can play the deactivate animation. And we just need to call exit. And I'll just call that um, on weapon stack zero. I forgot, but if you've remembered, the animation for deactivation actually happens at the exit function. So I don't need to call that in this. So I'll remove that. And I'll just call exit at weapon stack zero. And let's run the game and see how we go. Um, okay, so I dropped the weapon. I switched to the starting weapon and it instantly picks it back up. Now, now if you're keen eyed, you might realize that the weapon is falling directly into the pickup detection node that we created in our last episode. So we're gonna need to do some things to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, there's a sneaky little bit of code that we can slip in on the rigid body. Um, and I'll just come over to one of them. They all use the same script. So I'll just uh, set up a Boolean variable called pickup ready. And I'll set that to false. And I'll just set up a ready function here. And I'll type await get tree dot create timer. And I'll just make it two seconds. And I'll type timeout. And then right below this, I'll type pickup ready is true um, and so that'll give us a two second window that will allow the weapon to drop to the ground and it won't activate in the pickup detection however we do need to go over to our fps weapon manager and just make sure that when it a body is detected in our weapon manager that we actually check that its pickup is ready so i'll come back to that weapon pickup detection function and type if body dot pickup ready and i'll just tab in all of our code so unless that's true, we're not going to pick up the weapon. And so that should just get us by. And just like that, the weapon falls to the ground and it's visible. Okay, so we're cracking along. Now you might think we're done, but we're pretty far from it. There's a few extra things that we need to do. Um, and I, you could probably think for a little second, um, with the code that I've written so far, what happens if I try to drop the next weapon. We can drop any weapon that we've got and we'll go back to weapon in stack zero, which is this pistol here. But what happens if we try to drop that? What's gonna happen then? So let's run the game and have a look. Okay, so I've dropped that first weapon and I try to drop the second weapon, you can't really hear it, but it says invalid get index zero on array. So there's nothing to drop. So there's a couple of things we need to do to make sure that this continues to roll smoothly. The first thing, um, it, which is totally optional, but I think it's good to have, is an, a variable on our weapon to say that it can even be dropped. So this is a design choice. You don't need to have this. It's just the first thing that I think of when, you know, some, we some games have weapons that can't be dropped, pistols, knives, stuff like that. So I'm going to set up a variable here, can be dropped on our weapon resource. If you're setting that up, you'll need to tick it on all of the weapons, unless you don't want it to be dropped. So I'm going to leave it unticked on blaster N, so it can't be dropped. And in the drop, I just need to add that to the start of the function so I can say if, I'll need to get access to it since we only have the weapon string. So if weapon list underscore name dot can be dropped. And then I can just tab in from that. Make it so all of these can be checked. The other thing that I want to do is just make sure that um, another rule we can also have here is um, weapon stack dot size is 
equal is not equal to one. And so we can't drop our final weapon. That's another option as well. And now all of that won't happen. So now we can't drop, we can drop this first weapon, no problems. But this second weapon, no matter what you do, you can't get rid of it. And so that somewhat solves the problem. The game won't crash, but we'll always go back to that pistol, no matter which weapon we have. And there's a couple of other issues, like this one here that you can see where we've picked up the weapon, but it's not showing up. And there's an invalid index on the weapon stack. And you might start to realize that we've got a bit of an issue with this weapon stack because the way that we're referencing it is um, not the best practice and it needs to be fixed otherwise so you can see I've got weapon indicator plus one because I want to be at the next step now weapon indicator when we pick it up but we don't have two weapons so there's no way for it to go in that case so you can remove that that's probably the first step but we're still going to have issues um, and so I think we can fix this problem altogether. Okay, so let's fix this weapon stack. So we've got to come right back up to the start of the code. This is one of the first things we've written. So don't worry if you don't remember what this all does. Um, I forget sometimes too. So this was this weapon indicator variable is what controls our weapon stack. When we want to switch weapons, we increment that weapon indicator, which is just an int and then we feed that to the weapon stack and we pass it into the exit function. So we're essentially just, you know, counting up up to a certain point and counting down to a certain point, uh, which is okay. But then you need to track that position every time you're changing the weapon outside of the weapon change moment. So when you pick up a weapon, when you drop the weapon and anything else in between, because you never know, you might want to add something in the future and you'll need to update the weapon stack and know where it is. And at least in this particular instance, uh, there's situations where you could add that weapon anywhere in the stack. You don't know where you are. Um, and so we are going to set up a way to do this better, I think. So everything here is going to be aired out. We can pretty much delete this weapon indicator line here. And I'm going to type var get ref. This is just the variable I decided on. You can call it something different if you want. And I'm going to make that equal to the weapon stack dot find and I'm going to look for the current weapon, weapon name. And so like I'll find the current weapon that we have in the stack and it will return that number. And so now all I need to do is increment that by one or reduce it by one. So we'll say get ref equals min and it'll just be get ref plus one comma and we'll just make it, it can't be any greater than the weapon stack dot size minus one. Not dissimilar from the previous code that we had. And we can do the exact same thing for weapon down. I'll copy this um, variable get ref and we'll call it up again. And this time uh, get ref will be equal to the max of get ref minus one or zero. So we can't go past zero, otherwise we will error out. Or we'll actually, to be honest, we won't error out. We end up at the start, which to be honest, could be something you want to do, but like uh, we don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. So we won't go past zero. And we'll pass that in. And so now we'll be able to get to the next weapon in the stack without having to have a, another variable to track that, which means we don't need to worry where we are in the stack when we pick up a weapon and when we drop a weapon. Okay, obviously when we pick up a weapon, we were using the weapon indicator, but we can do the exact same thing that we did with the uh, weapon up and weapon down inputs. Here, we can create a variable called getRef and we can just call up the weapon stack and we can go find weapon.name. In this case, it's going to be the current weapon. We can call up the weapon stack dot find current weapon dot weapon name. Same as before. I could have copied it. It's the exact same code every time. And so now we're just going to add that and we're going to insert it at that point. And so now it's just going to increment. It'll be the next weapon in the stack. When you pick up a weapon, if you're in the middle of the stack, it's okay. So that's where it's going to go. And so now we come to drop and we can do that here as well. We've actually got the weapon ref up here, but I'm going to do it again just because that's what I've decided to do. You know, it's, it could work either way. So I'm going to just type get ref weapon stack current weapon. I'll copy it from where we pick up a weapon because it's the exact same. And then 
all we need to do is get ref equals max the exact same as when we drop a weapon is when we go down so it's just essentially the same process it, it you do it so frequently that you might actually want to set up a function for it to be honest um it, it's something that you could seriously consider at that point where it shows up that many times in the code so it's not the best practice but it was just something that i thought needed to be done um and it, it really does solve this problem so now we can drop any weapon we want we can pick up any weapon we want we don't have to worry too much about it it's going to work every time Okay, so that I can pick up that weapon, I can drop this weapon, I can, and the weapon stack isn't affected by that, and it just feels really nice. And you can shoot the weapon, that's really cool, I love that. Awesome. All right, guys, so that's how you do it, or that's how I'm doing it, in this weapon stack. How'd you guys get on? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. We're getting pretty close to the end now. We can pick up a weapon. The next thing we need to consider is actually picking up just regular ammo, which we can recycle some of this code that we've got going on. So it's not going to be that hard, to be honest. Uh, we're really almost there. And then we can, maybe we can add some hands. Alrighty, that'll do it for this lesson. We can now drop our weapons and we should no longer have any issues tracking our position in our weapon stack. How did you do? If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to put a comment down below. I always appreciate that. Or you can always join the Discord where you can ask me questions more directly and interact with the community. You can also leave suggestions for tutorials for me to work on in the future. As always, I really do appreciate a like and subscribe, guys. If you want to support the channel further, you can also do so at patreon.com slash chefgames where we have the final two episodes of this tutorial series already up. And if you're a patron, you will get access to any videos I do in the future in advance. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Azak from Shaft Games, and I'll see you next time.